Thomas Mantell was an experienced pilot. His flight history consisted of 2,167 hours, flying time, and he had been honored for his part in the Battle of Normandy during World War II. On 7 January 1948, Godman Army Airfield at Fort Knox, Kentucky, received a report from the Kentucky Highway Patrol, of an UFO near Madisonville, Kentucky. Reports of a Westbourne circular object, 250 to 300 feet 80 to 90 meters in diameter, were received from Owensboro and Irvington. At about 1.45 p.m., Sergeant Quinton Blackwell saw an object from his position in the control tower at Fort Knox. Two other witnesses in the tower also reported a white object in the distance. Colonel Guy Hicks, the base commander, reported an object he described as very white, and about one-fourth the size of the full moon. Through binoculars it appeared to have a red border at the bottom. It remained stationary, seemingly, for one and a half hours. Observers at Clinton County Army Airfield in Ohio described the object as having the appearance of a flaming red cone, trailing a gaseous green mist and observed the object for around 35 minutes another observer. At Lockbourne Army Airfield in Ohio noted, just before leaving, it came to very near the ground, staying down for about 10 seconds, then climbed at a very fast rate back to its original altitude, 10,000 feet, leveling off and disappearing into the overcast heading 120 degrees. Its speed was greater than 500 miles per hour, 800 kilometers h in level flight. Four F-51D Mustangs of Sea Flight, 165th Fighter Squadron Kentucky Air National Guard, one piloted by Mantell, were already in the air and told to approach the object. Blackwell was in radio communication with the pilots throughout the event. One pilot's Mustang was low on fuel, and he quickly returned to base. Ruppelt notes that there was some disagreement amongst the air traffic controllers as to Mantell's words as he communicated with the tower. Some sources reported that Mantell had described an object which looks metallic and of tremendous size, but according to Ruppelt, others disputed whether or not Mantell actually said this. The other two pilots accompanied Mantell in steep pursuit of the object. They later reported they saw an object, but described it as so small and indistinct that they could not identify it. Mantell ignored the suggestions that the pilots should level their altitude and try to more clearly see the object. Only one of Mantell's wingmen, Lieutenant Albert Clements, had an oxygen mask, and his oxygen was in low supply. Clements and the third pilot, Lieutenant Hammond, called off their pursuit at 22,500 feet 6, meters. Mantell continued to climb, however. According to the Air Force, once Mantell passed 25,000 feet 7, meters, he blacked out from the lack of oxygen hypoxia, and his plane began spiraling back towards the ground. A witness later reported Mantell's Mustang in a circling descent. His plane crashed on a farm south of Franklin, Kentucky, on the Kentucky-Tennessee state line. Fireman later pulled Mantell's body from the Mustang's wreckage. His seatbelt was shredded, and his wristwatch had stopped at 3.18 p.m., the time of his crash. Meanwhile, by 3.50 p.m. the UFO was no longer visible to observers at Godman Army Airfield. The Mantell incident was reported by newspapers around the nation, and received a significant news media attention. A number of sensational rumors were also circulated about Mantell's crash. According to UFO historian Curtis Peebles, among the rumors were claims that the flying saucer was a Soviet missile. It was an alien spacecraft that shot down Mantell's fighter when it got too close. Captain Mantell's body was found riddled with bullets. The body was missing. The plane had completely disintegrated in the air, and the wreckage was radioactive. However, no evidence has ever surfaced to substantiate any of these claims, and Air Force investigations specifically refuted some claims, such as the supposedly radioactive wreckage. Captain Ruppelt wrote that I had always heard a lot of wild speculation about the condition of Mantell's crashed F-51, so I wired for a copy of the accident report. Said that, Mantell's body had not burned, not disintegrated, and was not full of holes, the wreck was not radioactive, nor was it magnetized. Mantell was the first member of the Kentucky Air National Guard to die in flight. According to John Trowbridge, historian of the Kentucky National Guard, there is a real X-Files twist to this, too. 
Mantell lived almost his entire life in Louisville, but he was born in a hospital in Franklin, only a few miles from where he was died. The Mantell crash was investigated by Project Sign, the first Air Force research group assigned to investigate UFO reports. One writer noted that the people on Project Sign worked fast on the Mantell incident. Contemplating a flood of queries from the press as soon as they heard about the crash, they realized that they had to get a quick answer. Venus had been the target of a chase by an Air Force F-51 several weeks before and there were similarities between this sighting and the Mantell incident. So, the word Venus went out. Mantell had unfortunately been killed trying to reach the planet Venus. An Air Force major who was interviewed by several reporters following Mantell's crash flatly stated that it was Venus. In 1952 USAF Captain Edward Ruppelt, the supervisor of Project Blue Book, Project Sign's successor, was ordered to reinvestigate the Mantell incident. Ruppelt spoke with Dr. J. Alan Hynek, an astronomer at Ohio State University and scientific consultant to Project Sign and Project Blue Book. Hynek had supplied Project Sign with the Venus explanation in 1948, mainly because Venus had been in the same place in the sky that Mantell's UFO was observed. However, by 1952 Dr. Hynek had concluded that the Venus explanation was incorrect, because Venus wasn't bright enough to be seen by Mantell and the other witnesses, and because a considerable haze was present that would have further obscured the planet in the sky. Ruppelt also noted Dr. Hynek's statement that Venus, even if visible, would have been a pinpoint of light, but that eyewitness descriptions plainly indicated a large object. None of the descriptions could even vaguely be called a pinpoint of light. Having rejected the Venus explanation, Captain Ruppelt began to research other explanations for the incident. He was particularly interested in a suggestion by Dr. Hynek that Mantell could have misidentified a United States Navy ski hook with a balloon. In Madisonville, Kentucky the object was seen through a telescope and identified as a balloon by one observer. Additionally, between 4.30 and 4.45 p.m. an astronomer at Vanderbilt University watched an object in the sky. Viewed through binoculars, he said it was a pear-shaped balloon with cables and a basket attached. However, others disputed this idea, noting that no particular skihook balloon could be conclusively identified as being in the area in question during Mantell's pursuit. Despite this objection, Ruppelt thought the skihook explanation was plausible. The balloons were a secret Navy project at the time of Mantell's crash, were made of reflective aluminum, and were about 100 feet 30 meters in diameter, consistent with the description of the UFO as large, metallic, and cone-shaped. Since the skihook balloons were secret at the time, neither Mantell nor the other observers in the air control tower would have been able to identify the UFO as a skihook. But this was never proved. 